So welcome everybody to this webinar, which is uh, kindly co-promoted by Memsource, which is about uh, Memsource, uh, BLAZE's Memsource integration, translation automation turbocharged. And given that we have used this rocket, I think I would like to introduce one of the co-presenters uh, who is our little astronaut. And the other one who is going to help me tonight is Agnes, my lovely colleague. Let's get started. Uh, so before we get started, I mean, this is, I am uh, the founder of, of Be Lazy, and a lot of people ask me what Be Lazy is, and it's a cloud-based uh, secure middleware integration platform that is integrating various sources of work. Uh, so what we are trying to do is make sure that you are not only using automation within your system, but you are also using automation between different systems. Translation companies usually have a business management system that they use as the central system for uh, keeping the records of all their resources, all their translators, all their uh, projects, no matter what translation management system they are doing this uh, work in, or what vendor portals they are receiving them from. So uh, larger translation companies working directly with enterprise customers uh, usually have translation management systems to integrate to, like Memsource. Whereas uh, the same Memsource job, if somebody is working, let's say, for RWS Moravia, may come through their vendor portal Symfony. But there's other things as well. We are trying to integrate everything and give you like a single uh, integration ex experience, no matter how many systems your customers require you to use. There are three types of automation. Uh, and when people ask, like, how about the project management automation? And obviously, uh, these three main types of automation come up. The first one is linguistic. This is machine translation. This is the extraction of non-translatables. This is some of the uh, AI type thing that Memsource, for example, does uh, quite well. The second thing is uh, the process automation. If you've got, let's say, XTRF or you've got Plunet, that takes care of sometimes even creating the Memsource projects. It takes care of uh, assigning the translators very often. And that's uh, something that you can do in order to automate the process. The third one is the transaction automation. And this is what BLAZY excels in, which is uh, the trade, trading of information between one system and another. So we are always talking about integrations between two different types of systems, whereas in the other ones, they are inside the system. So why did we create an integration with Memsource? I think the most important reason is that we wanted uh, companies to have a continuous localization experience. And the problem with continuous localization is that if you're using a business management system, and you have not created your own integration. And even in uh, quite sophisticated systems like Memsource, this can uh, become a hurdle and it can stop at the first translation company. So what happens? The customer creates a job uh, and they want you to translate that. But you sometimes have to outsource it to a translator. And then the translator sends it back and there is human interaction very often even if it's always the same translator or always the same two, three translators, because somebody needs to insert this data into their business management system, such as BlueNet or Protemos, uh, then the right translator needs to be set up either automatically or manually. And then this needs to be set up also in Memsource uh, once they have uh, acknowledged that they would do the job in your business management system. So there is a lot of work that uh, just by not having the different systems integrated uh, are causing problems. And the Memsource has a lot of capabilities for the uh, end users to have projects created automatically. One of them is the automated project creation. You will, will see a short demo about this. This is when you are looking at, for example, your WordPress website or an FTP folder, and whenever something uh, pops up there, it's going to be taken automatically, created, imported into Memsource, and then offered to the right person. 
uh, these are also the continuous projects. There are also continuous projects where even the project name is not changing. Uh, then you also have the MemSource widget, which you can put to your website, and it's very similar to the customer portal of, of uh, XDRF or Plunet. But it is giving you immediately a price, it is doing the analysis immediately, so it's a fairly good experience for many of the customers, especially because it's simple. Uh, and also, you can have projects that come directly from your customers. So you are a, a translation company, you are working for an enterprise, the enterprise has its own MemSource instance, and then they can set you up as a vendor, and those projects directly appear in your instance of MemSource. Now, the problem is that even though there are integrations with XDRF and with Plunet for, and with LBS Suite, for uh, MemSource, this integration that they have created is not supporting these kind of automation workflows. Why is that? Like, let's have a quick look at, this is a, a, a figure from the Plunet website and how does the Plunet MemSource manager work? And I don't want to walk you through the whole thing here, but what you see is that the first on the left shows Plunet upload source files. So it works well if Plunet is the boss and if a person goes and uploads the source file into Plunet and then it's created in MemSource, then it's uh, analyzed in MemSource, then it is also assigned to the right people and so on and so forth and delivered and you deliver from Plunet. That's great if Plunet is the system where your customer can upload things or you can upload things. But if your customer uploads things in MemSource, then this is not working. And this is when you need uh, the B lazy integration with MemSource. It's not only Plunet. I mean, this was an example with Plunet, but XTRF and LBS Suite have exactly the same type of integration as uh, Plunet. Protemos, another tool that we support, does not even have a MemSource integration today. So before we go ahead, I would actually like to ask uh, all of you a few questions. The first question is, what business management system are you using? As you can see, I separated XTRF Classic projects from XTRF Smart projects, but it's still the same system. Uh, there is Plunet, there is Protemos, LBS Suit. Please cast your votes. Uh, you will also see own development, which is another interesting uh, use case. And you will see Google Sheet, Asana, if you use anything that is like Jira or widespread tools like this, that's it. And finally, other translation specific BMSs like, like uh, uh, translation projects or Project X or some other tools there. Please cast a bit more votes. I guess it takes a while until you go through the options. So I will just shut my mouth for a bit. Okay, uh, last votes. In five seconds, I'm closing this. And I only realized that in Zoom, you see all these questions at the same time. I'm sorry about that. So then I, I give you a little more time than that uh, because there are the two other questions. Why you are interested in the mem source automation uh, and if you are using a BMS, whether you license the MemSource automation module. The majority of you have not. Interesting. Okay. So I give you another 15 seconds. That what I would love to, <laughs> but I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've got any 
comments on the questions or anything that you want to share, please feel free to use the chat. I, I don't see it, uh, Agnes does. So thank you very much. Uh, here are the results. So XTRF Classic Projects, BlueNet, Protemos, our own, own development, Google Sheet, everything is represented here. And there are three companies that don't use a BMS at all. I mean, we will see why when we look at the individual results. The majority of you did not license the MEM source uh, automation module, but I mean, it may be also because there is no MEM source automation for your tool. So this was only for those who have, uh, who have um, a, a tool, a BMS that, that has this. And uh, many of you are interested in content connectors. That's the main thing. Great. So let's move on and let's see what the BLazy approach is. It allows you to fully use the MemSource automation capabilities. So the project is generated in MemSource in the first place. Uh, you can either use automations or you can create it manually. You can prepare the project, you can do whatever you want with the project. And after this, it is mirrored, it is inserted into one of our supported uh, business management systems. We currently support uh, XTRF, Plunet, Protemos, and LBS suit is coming actually next week. Plus, we've got a strong API uh, that is uh, that you can integrate with your own system. Why would you do that? I mean, this is a question that here, I think, in the MemSource, uh, webinar it's it's particularly relevant because Mac, memsource does have a pretty good api and you could just integrate memsource into your system and i would say that if you are working with more than one tool so if your customer is using let's say sometimes smart link sometimes xtm sometimes global link then it makes sense uh, to use the blazy integration because you only need to do one integration if it's just MemSource that you need to integrate into your own BMS, then maybe it, it makes sense to, to use uh, MemSource's APIs. So the third step is the vendor assignment. The vendor assignment is monitored by BLazy. And whenever there is a mapping between the vendors, so we know when you assign a vendor in your XTRF or in your Protemus, we would know whom to assign in your MemSource instance and assign them. And when the vendor delivers in the BMS, it's also delivered in MemSource. So we can also update uh, the, the status of the project. So this is what we do differently from other companies. What's the business value here? First of all, project creation time can decrease. I mean, uh, creating a project in MemSource is honestly much faster than in most of the business management systems that I could see. Uh, you can actually increase your sales because you're becoming more scalable. The turnaround times are decreasing. When a customer sends you a project, let's say through the vendor integration, that can immediately be uh, outsourced to the translator. So there is a, a, an automated translator selection. It's automatically go out. There is no human touch really here, if necessary, which means that your main uh, added value is finding the right team of translators and making sure that they are motivated to take the jobs. Thus, you can sell real continuous localization. And there is one more thing, which is something that BeLazy does. We are a service company. So besides offering you a uh, platform to use for all these automations, we also offer you some tech technology sales consultancy. So if you are trying to sell this value to your customers, you can invite us into a meeting and we would be very happy to represent your interests and, and uh, help you sell better by, by answering their technical questions. Any of these things are not part of the existing integration. So this kind of continuity of localization is, is not something that's there in the uh, other tools. So now I would like to show you First, a bit of MemSource. You're more, most probably familiar with the system, but if not, how do I set up an automated project creation in MemSource? I mean, this is something that uh, is about connecting 
a Dropbox folder, something fairly simple, just connecting a Dropbox folder. And whenever I add a new file into Dropbox, uh, that should be picked up and the new mem source project is created. And that mem source project is going to go into XDRF, into your own business management system, into Plunet and so on. First, I create the connector. So I just authenticate my Dropbox uh, in the mem source connectors. It's under settings. You go to connector and you will find it. Uh, this is working because you see the check mark now. And the next thing to do is go down and get to the automated project creation. Under automated project creation, you're able to set up rules on how these projects should be picked up. So first we give it a name. What is this automated project setting resource? Then we select the remote folder, like from which folder in your Dropbox would you like to, uh, to take jobs? I mean, this is the mem source files. You can see the files already there. And then the very standard things are like where to put the processed files, uh, how often should it synchronize, and you select a service. This is very important. You need to have a service because that defines your pricing and everything else. So you take the source language. The files are always going to be in English. I want to uh, translate them into German and Hungarian. And the project should be named Dropbox project, order number, order email in uh, MemSource. And this is how you set up an automated project creation from a connector. It's as simple as this. Uh, doesn't take more than a couple of minutes. So let's move on to the next uh, stage where we are setting up the MemSource connector in BLazy to monitor your instance of MemSource and uh, to tell you when a uh, project is ready. In order to do that, I'm going to use uh, Protemos here. The only reason why I use Protemos here is that it is, first of all, the only tool like among LBS, XTRF, and Plunet that offers you a free API just like MemSource. So there is everything is, is based on the on the volume or the costing is based on the volume. And the other thing that's also worth mentioning regarding Protemos is that you just need to uh, copy the API key into be lazy to make it work. Uh, the other two systems take a little bit of tinkering, which can be five to 10 minutes. So it's not an awful lot, but, but definitely a bit more complicated to configure than, than Protemos here. Um, so this is the Protemos interface. This is the mem source interface and you see your username. And one thing that I realize, unfortunately, is that uh, in these videos, the, when I'm sharing my screen, somehow that everything is visible on the right side. Sorry about that. It's uh, probably somehow differently set up. So this is BeLazy. You just log into BeLazy with your Google or Microsoft account. You add your username, you add your password, you enter cloud.memsource.com as the URL, and then the system tells you it's automatable and you start clicking on automation. No, you click on automation. First thing you need to set up is uh, what kind of analysis you want to create. These are the same analysis settings as in MapSource. Then uh, once you decided this for projects that don't have an analysis, BeLazy will create an analysis. Uh, BeLazy is, is downloading a lot of information from your system. Like you see existing project names here, you see uh, the clients, cost center, and other things. This here is important if you are using an existing integration, let's say with XTRF or Plunet, because then you need to select that those projects that are created by the integration in MemSource should not be recreated in XTRF and Plunet. So this is just to help you with uh, overcoming this difficulty. The next thing is, what do you want to call your MemSource projects in your business management system? You can take a lot of metadata. You can customize a naming convention here. For example, here, the name, the connection name, and the purchase order. Next topic is the clients. Who are your clients? I mean, first, there is a default client. But then uh, you can set up rules that if the client is in your system is, let's say, client A, client B, you will have a full list of clients coming from your MemSource instance here. 
but I just use the simplified Memser system, and the cost center is this and that, then in your Clunet or Protemus, you should be using this client. If the cost center is that, then it's another client, because that is the invoicing approach to clients versus the working approach. You can set up anything you want. You can set up buyer, buyer's owner, and then this list is coming from your business management system. So pro translations is coming from there. Who should be the project manager in the business management system for the projects? You can say that this is based on the client. This can also be based on other metadata and you set up uh, who should be the right one, one or more. This is the specialization where you just actually have to map general to a list of specializations in your tool. And the units is an easy one word. I mean, we have done, we have created a, a very generic automation. So the unit is, uh, is something that can be an hour. It can be uh, uh, also pages, DTP, in a lot of types of projects go through be lazy, not just MemSource projects. So this is simple in MemSource. What's not so simple in MemSource very often is actually uh, these, these brackets, because these are coming from the net rate schemes. What percentage are you going to uh, pay for certain type of, of entries? And for some reason in MemSource, uh, the machine translation percentage is different from the translation memory and the non-translatable percentage. And in some tools like XTRF, uh, what you will find is that you have less categories than you really want to use. I mean, there are ways to overcome this, or if you're not using, for example, uh, machine translation, then it's even easier. Uh, this is not causing so much trouble for the other tools, such as uh, Plunet or Protemus or, or your own tools. Uh, it's more that in XTRF, we've got a limited set of uh, rate types that we can, we can choose from. And there are ways to resolve that. So here you just say that whatever is a TM101 is going to be a context match in your system, and the languages have already been met. So after all this configuration, VLazy knows perfectly well how to create your project from mem coming from MemSource in the other system. What's happening here is that you see an hourglass, which is telling you that it's waiting for something. And what it's waiting for is uh, for the analysis to, to finish. And there is one more thing that I uh, did not mention, that by default for MemSource, we recommend that you automatically, without logging into Be Lazy, synchronize every project into your business management system. But if you don't want to do this, if you want to do some of this manually, you can just remove this condition and go on. So that's how much it takes to set up the MemSource connector. This is a configuration that you may repeat uh, once you got familiar with the system. Now we will move on to the next one, which is coming back a bit to uh, MemSource, which is about the automation widget. I'm wondering how many of you are familiar with the automation widgets. Uh, it's basically, it's a URL uh, that you can share with your customers. And whenever they use this URL to give you a project, uh, as you can see, you can select which services are selectable, which languages should be there, which connectors should be used. Basically, they've got a very simple way. This is like a customer portal. They've got a very simple way, uh, which is like this, to uh, post jobs to you. And you can see that even the name is submit files to be lazy here. I have just loaded the file. I got my email address. I can change the due date later. I can enter a purchase order number, which will be visible in your business management system. Uh, project name, whatever you like. And you see that the amount 145.48 euros was also calculated. Whenever you use this functionality, the widget as a customer, this turns up in MemSource as well. So what we will see in a second is that it's not only that the customer got feedback, but also under my projects in MemSource, this is visible. When I open the project, I can see the language pair. I can see who uh, created it. And because it's visible in my projects, it's also visible in BeLazy. So I am just synchronizing here the two systems. I mean, this is happening automatically. 
but in this uh, demo I will be doing it often. I'm looking at the new projects and look, this is creating now an analysis and it, it is getting ready to import the volume and everything else into your business management system such as Plunet or XTRF. Purchase order number is there, the workflow is there, the deadline is there, everything is available. The full analysis is also available. How about uh, the vendor assignment? This is when uh, you've got a customer using MemSource and you're also using MemSource and you've got an instance of MemSource. When you go into the uh, settings in MemSource, you will see the organization token, the vendor token. This is what you need to send to your customer and your customer at the same place in settings can create a new vendor and can simply copy in your vendor token and select the price list and everything. And then from that moment on, they can push projects through to your uh, instance of, of MemSource. These projects, the same way, would appear under your MemSource project without any additional warning. And this is great because these projects are also picked up by BeLazy. So now let's go into the, we have looked into MemSource very much. As you can see, BeLazy doesn't really have a lot of interface, so there is not too much to look into. Now let's watch what the project looks like in Protemos itself. Istvan, if I may, yes? there is a question um, in the chat. Jan is asking whether the automation widget is provided by BeLazy or by MemSource. That's MemSource. That is MemSource's automation widget. So this is a project that was created in Protemos. You can see uh, the catalogs are already taken, the language pair, even the purchase order number, finances are filled in uh, actually correctly. And uh, you can see the differences between the English, German, English, Hungarian, and the two steps in the workflow, which is translation and review, even though it shows service translation here, one is uh, the amount that you get from the customer for translation and one for the, for the revision. Uh, so this is where a Protemos project, how a Protemos project works. We generally also would have a way to work with uh, files in BeLazy. So if you're using a system that works with files, we, we would do that. But in MemSource, you are working online. So there is no need to download uh, and handle files. How about XTRF? Now looking into the smart projects, which actually they don't have a MemSource integration with, like when you create a new project in uh, MemSource again, just a very simple one, client A, and then you select the uh, languages as well. Probably you have done this a million times, but this can come from your customer as well. Uh, what we usually recommend setting up is the net rate schemes and the price lists. But if you don't set it up, XTRF is going to give you the price based on your price lists. So nothing happens. There are two steps in this workflow and we are adding a new file here as a new job uh, going into two languages. The two steps workflow is mapped to the right workflow in XTRF based on your configurations. And now uh, once this project is created, in, uh, in uh, MemSource, you just need to synchronize. Again, this is automatic. Synchronization happens automatically, but I just didn't want to wait now for that. It is generating the missing analysis, so there is no volume for the time being. Uh, the auto accept rule is, is, is working, so all the projects are automatically accepted. Going back here, you see that now the project is about to be uh, seen. Yes, and you see the volume and you see the total amount uh, under this approval spending. And if you go into the XTRF instance, this project had been created there. assigned to the right 
client with the purchase order number filled in, the deadline filled in, volume filled in, in the notes you see the project link, uh, the languages are set up. And here under the process, you can see that uh, you can set up your providers and the plant start date and end date as well for all of this. Apologies for the screen sharing issue that you don't see the right part. But what I'm doing is that I'm setting up there the providers and I'm setting up the deadline from that part of the screen. So I'm taking this test translator X6666. Uh, as a translator and then uh, there is also a review step or sorry this is a translation step for the other another language i can also take a provider from here which can be integration test in our case i need to set up the start date because i did that wrong here at first attempt well, that happens with every one doing project management every now and then. Now I managed to do this right, do it right. What you can also see is that the receivables and the payables are both uh, based on the MEM source analysis. So they are both filled in correctly. And as you can see, the project is under the delivery spending here. And these are the projects that are being monitored in your business management system for what we call the full automation. And what is that? Like, how did we select the right workflow? How did we select that this was a smart project? Uh, what we set up in BLaze's automation, which is something you have seen before, is that uh, the project service mapping should depend on the workflow metadata. And if the workflow is translation and revision, I'm going to use the basic translation workflow in XTRF, which happens to be a smart project workflow in my case. If I'm using a different one, which is a classic project workflow, then look at it. It's going to be uh, a classic project. And this is what I'm about to show you in uh, this part of the video. I'm just creating it. It was already created in, in uh, MemSource. So I'm just actually clicking this button. There was no automation set up here. That's why I needed to click a button. I changed the orders. And straight from the BLAZE interface, you can actually open up any XTRF project and any MemSource project, and the correspondences are established there. And what you see here is that the project number, the client is selected correctly. It's a very similar project to the previous one. Uh, you can also see that the analysis, the, the, the receivables are already there. And if you want to go into the individual workflows on the language level, which is something that exterior process automations can perfectly automate. So this is where you need a configuration rather than any further automation from BeLazy. You're able to select uh, the vendor and you're able to select the start date and the deadline here. So I'm opening this job information. For those of you who are not so familiar with XTRF or not interested, just ignore this part. Uh, this is about MemSource on the source side, but we have uh, different integrations on the target. So I have selected also the provider here, not only in the smart project, and I'm going to select the deadline, set up the deadline there as well. start the job. It's important to click on save.
And you can do the same thing for the other language as well, have you not done it. I'm going to synchronize again uh, so that the two systems are brought into sync. And I'm going to uh, see whether this vendor selection in XTRF has affected my project in uh, Memsource. And you see that there is like a user translator is one of the provider. So that provider that I set up for, for German has changed. The provider I set up for Hungarian did not change. So I can go into the Hungarian just the same way I can select the provider. And the dates and everything we need to. And when you hit save and you synchronize either automatically or manually, this change is also going to be visible in the XTR Classic project. Sorry, in the, in the Memsource project, I wanted to say. So translator, reviewer, they are automatically synchronized with the right person in Memsource. And there is one thing that I haven't started translating this document, so I didn't show you here, is that if you finish the workflow, if you get into the next levels, uh, when you do the completion and when the, when the vendors come into the vendor portal and indicate that they have delivered the job, that's going to be automatically updated also in your uh, mem source process. So there's a way to have a complete control over uh, the automation, which is what we want to achieve is that you are able to run small tasks without project major intervention. So how does this vendor assignment happen? Uh, it is based on rules. So one of the things you can do is that you can tell BeLazy to create, uh, to automatically map all the uh, BMS users, which is XTRF or Clunet or Protimus uh, or LBS, to the mem source connection users. And when there is a need, create new accounts. Uh, then you can select a uh, naming convention, whether you want that with the full name, whether you want it with the first letter of the last name and the, uh, sorry, first name and the last name. There are like a couple of naming convention rules, but what happens if you already have users in MemSource when you start using BeLazy? No problem, because those users, like the translator user here that you can see on the screen at the bottom part, those users can be assigned manually. So this is what happened here. If you remember, I selected test translator X5555 in XTRF, and that uh, actually triggered MemSource to assign the translator user. That was because I had the test translator X5555 here assigned to the user translator user. So if I select that, it's always going there. And if some user is not selected from my list of XTRF users and there is no uh, explicit assignment, then BeLazy will try to automatically create a new user for that person using your uh, naming convention. If you want to avoid this, you can also disable this automatic creation. Then when there is a problem uh, with the assignment, you're going to get a so-called red flag, which appears at the top of BeLazy, and that allows you to explicitly assign the person. You get an email notification, and, and you just go into BeLazy and do this in a minute. So this is what I wanted to mostly show today. Uh, how can you start working with this if you're interested in it? First of all, drop us a line. I think that's a good start. Um, or answer the email. You will get a follow-up email after this uh, session as well. We will help you set up the initial connection. And then you're ready to go once this is done. And you will be charged for the projects that you transfer via this automation. One thing that we talked about earlier is that uh, although this webinar was about MemSource only, we do support multiple systems on the source side, multiple systems on the target side. And I thought that uh, it's worth mentioning that with the same integration, 
you are not only able to get uh, mem source projects into your business management system, but if you've got customers that use Global Link, which is TransPerfect's uh, system, or SmartLink, uh, which is a kind of an independent system, or actually this month, uh, next week, we've got a new integration coming with Localize as well. Uh, so if you've got any of these translation management systems, you are able to connect them into your uh, own business management system. But not only that, if you are working for other translation companies, uh, such as Moravia, AWS Moravia, Transline, or uh, people who are using XTRF or people who are using uh, Plunet, like, like uh, XTRF is, Aqualad is using a lot of XTRF or Seprotech. Uh, Plunet is being used by Morning Site Translations or, or Vistatech or, or some others. Or you're working for VLocalize or Lionbridge or TransPerfect or Translated.net. You're also able to take the jobs automatically. Now, all these integrations are a bit different. Uh, we are going to host a series about all the different integrations. But of course, your interest, if you're interested, we can already help you uh, set these up. And if you don't see a system that you would like to see supported here, then just uh, get in touch with us. We've got a program which we, we actually call the Task Forces, where multiple companies team up to, to uh, provide a trigger for a support of a new system. So I got to the end of this slideshow and I'm very curious if there are any questions. Yes, there are. Uh, there are for now three. I'll start with the one that Nenad asked, uh, which is for sure interesting for everyone. He is a bit still confused whether uh, Be Lazy subscription is enough or do we need to buy some bigger package in Memsource? Okay, so Memsource has a very liberal API policy. And this is something that I think the industry appreciates very much. They don't charge for API usage. Uh, they have like, like reasonable API usage limits. So uh, basically anything like from the team start uh, edition has APIs. And because of this, there is no, not any more prerequisites on the Memsource side. If you're looking into the business management systems, then if you've got your own, that's obviously something that you can uh, integrate with. You don't need any package. Protemos also gives a free API usage. Uh, XTRF charges for the APIs. Uh, Plunet has an API, um, BeLazy connector, uh, which is a package that they license separately. And uh, LBS suit also uh, charges for the APIs. So depends on what combination of systems you are using, but on the mem source side, there is no additional cost. All right, and there comes the second question How, uh, from Jan. How do you manage workflows with additional BMS tasks outside the TMS? For example, engineering tasks. Can you maintain an uninterrupted workflow? I mean, if there is like an external task that is not, so there are tasks that are happen in MemSource and there are tasks that happen outside of MemSource. What you can do in BeLazy is select uh, for this MemSource workflow, for this customer, this is the XTRF workflow. I happen to know that you work in XTRF, XTRF service that you are using. After that, uh, it's usually the translation and the review tasks that are automatically mapped to the uh, mem source tasks. So you are able to manage uh, a more complicated workflow as well. Uh, we are looking into what we call the, the, the workflow mapping where you are able to fully customize this within the interface. At the moment, we are working actually with naming conventions. So if somebody is called translation, somebody called it a review. So the, the standard uh, building bricks of an XTR project are, are built in into uh, the BeLazy integration engine. Did this answer your question? Oh, sorry, I muted myself. Yes, it's, <laughs> yes, it, it answered, thank you. All right, um, the next question. If the translator is assigned within MemSource, not selected within the BMS, can this get across the BMS system as well? And the job status in the 
business management system? Does it change when the job status in MEMSOS changes? So is the status of the jobs in MEMSOS monitored and then communicated uh, over the BMS? It's a very good question. And as a matter of fact, today, the answer is no. So uh, even in this uh, workflow, the BMS is kind of a, a bit of a boss. MEMSource is where things are coming from. It is not something that is uh, unimaginable or not, not a use case that we, we deem uh, illegit. But at the moment, like in today's version of the BLazy integration, this is not happening. So the translator is selected within the BMS. If you have the need, then I suggest we talk and, uh, and we can look into implementing also this part. Thank you. And then Sotir, uh, I will come to your uh, question um, shortly. Just back to what Nana mentioned earlier, he is referring back to the Vemsos website, which states that the API is only from the ultimate package. So uh, this is probably what uh, causes the confusion here. I think maybe there are some people from Memsource here, but I don't think that that's the case. I mean, I've <laughs> seen people use lower packages than that. And if I understand correctly, only one package, which is not really used anymore uh, by, by anyone. So it was like this university package or something like that. Only that one did not have the, uh, the API usage. Um, if there is someone from the Memsos crowd here, then please don't hesitate to pitch in. There is the chat, you can also add your answers, but um, uh, we'll definitely get back. Sotir asks, how to filter and not accept projects with a volume below, for example, 300 words that accept all other projects? Well, this is uh, usually offered to you, I think, in, in other systems. If, if uh, like You would probably not do this with your customers directly if your customers are pushing the uh, projects into Memsource. I mean, yes, you can set up the auto acceptance uh, but in reality, the auto acceptance here is it, it means that you create the MemSource project in your instance of the business management system. So in that, you can say that you don't want to create all the projects, but only those that are above, 100, uh, above 300 words. This is something that I think makes more sense with, with other systems that uh, you are not working uh, directly in or, or something like that than, than MemSource. But I mean, if, if, if you need this, there is a possibility. So far, there are no other questions, neither in the chat nor in the question and answer box. Great, thank you. Carlos is thanking, thanking you for the presentation. It's also important to mention here. And I'm also thanking everybody for their attention with a beautifully composed slide. And uh, I definitely hope to see you among the, the users of this integration soon.